murder hobo in a bar, other patrons trying to work out their gender. Are you a man? Ew, no, I'm an elf. No, uh, I mean male. No, no, this is plate armor. Damn it, what is in your pants? I keep a bag of holding in there. No, I mean like, do you have a dick or a vagina? Yes, several actually. I keep them as trophies. That's, uh, whatever. I'm, I'm asking what's between your legs. That's where I keep my bag of holding, tied to my thigh, next to my coin purse. Coin purse? Like, your nut sack. No, no, I keep my nuts in my rucksack. Wouldn't want my food to get sweaty. Son of a, what kind of genitalia are between your legs? All of them. I keep them in the bag of holding. Who do you vote for here? The people who can't drop the questions? Or the one sitting here with a bag of holding full of dicks? <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Bear Bar Tales. It is I, the one bear that has been told by multiple sources that he gives off strong dad vibes. So, hey. Don't touch the thermostat, put on a jacket. You know what, go to your room, you need to finish up that homework. The Bear Bard. Today we have the first part of a four story epic. In this video we have stories one and two, next week will be three and four. In this tale, we follow the exploits of one Elodin, who suffers from a case of main character syndrome. For those of you not in the know, main character syndrome is when a player can't fathom that others exist and have their own wants and desires. They then hate when they start getting pushed back against their usually dumb plans from those players. So buckle up, it's gonna be fun. But first, if you enjoy this type of content and want to hear more from the Bear Bard, make sure to give this video a like, and maybe give that sub button some cuddles. Every sub I get gets me one step closer to getting Crow's Perch to finally admit that D&D 5e is his favorite game and that he hates all of their TTRPGs, especially Pathfinder and Blades in the Dark. <laughs> Come on Crow, we all know it's true. But without further ado, let's begin today's story titled The Short But Horribly Annoying Life of Aladdin the Paladin. Dramatis Personae DM, a talented but inexperienced DM. His only flaw might be his leniency towards problem players. Me? Playing a half-elf druid. Sorcerer. Mostly just an unfortunate bystander to what will unfold. Aladdin the Paladin. Very creatively named Human Paladin. Please take a guess whether he'll be a problem down the line. Monk. The poor guy who's going to suffer the most. At one point in the story, he'll literally throw his player's handbook at Aladdin. Please hold back on judging him too harshly until you read further. Nobody got hurt, at least out of game. Without further introduction, I'll let the words and deeds of Elodin the Paladin speak for himself. Our level 1 characters meet at a wizard's tower. The old mage needs help with some busy work and is hiring adventurers, promising gold as a reward. Me. Looks like we're going to work together on this. I'm Darinius of the Silver Forest. Pleasure to meet you. Aladdin the Paladin? I am Aladdin the Paladin, and I am the force of the law. Monk. Wow, what a name. I am Aladdin the Paladin, angrily interrupting Monk. Yes, that's my name, okay? I'm Aladdin the Paladin. He looks like he's trying to think hard for a minute before he continues. My parents were bards. They liked rhyming. Monk. Okay, so they knew that you'd become a paladin when they named you? Aladdin. Well, yes, okay? They gave me away to a paladin order when I was little. That, by the way, is literally everything we're going to learn about Aladdin's backstory during the rest of this campaign. I'm sure it was a well-fleshed-out character. Me. No need to get agitated about simple introductions. Let's hear what our wizard hosts need from us. You know, you know it's always a good sign when there's tension over something as small as a name during introductions. Totally means we have all cool heads prevailing. And so we went on our first quest, fetching some magical ingredients from an abandoned mine, which, of course, was infested by some low-level monsters. Everything went fine, we looted some gemstones and leveled up. Together with Wizard's Pay, we had earned ourselves 1500 GP. Aladdin the Paladin, Give me the money! I want to buy plate armor. Monk, No, we are splitting evenly. Everyone gets their fair share. Aladdin, What do you even need that money for? You're a monk. You don't use weapons or armor. And the druid can't use metal items. And the sorcerer doesn't have to pay for new spells. So I'm the only one with proper use of this money. <laughs> I like that he clarifies that the druid doesn't use metal items. Like, only metal items have monetary value. That enchanted wood staff crafted by satyrs in the magical glen on a full moon? 
Just a garbage stick with no real value. Monk, we know each other for three days now. There's no way I pay for your armor while I get nothing out of it. Let's all calm down. I don't have much need for material wealth right now. I'll lend you my share, Aladdin, if you want to save up for better armor to protect all of us. You can pay me back later. Aladdin the Paladin? No, I am not borrowing money. Money lending is evil, and I am the force of the law. Me. Okay, it was just an offer. I have no clue what led to this weird outburst and his hate of money lending. Maybe some weird stereotypes? No idea. Monk. So, we're splitting it evenly. I want to save up for some magic items the wizard has for sale. DM. Alright, anything else you guys want to do while you're in town? At this point, while Sorcerer, Monk, and I do some shopping, Aladdin the Paladin is passing multiple notes to the DM. DM. Are you sure about this? I mean, you're lawful good, right? Aladdin the Paladin. Yes, it is in service of the good. DM rolls his eyes visibly. Alright, once all of you meet up again at the market, you notice Aladdin appearing from a dark side alley parting ways with a sleazy-looking half-orc. What did you do with that half-orc? He looks like a criminal. Aladdin the Paladin. I bought some drugs. Everyone. What? Aladdin. Since you won't let me buy my plate armor, I need to find another way to quadruple my gold. Monk. So much for your I am the law tagline. And how do you even plan to resell it for quadruple its value? Aladdin the Paladin. I'll dilute it with sawdust to quadruple the amount and then resell it. Monk. And so much for your I oppose evil tagline as well. Aladdin the Paladin. Shut up, idiot. Every drug addict is evil anyways. So if they die from diluted drugs, it is still a victory for good. Me. Uh, are you sure this is a good idea? Aladdin the Paladin. If you misers would just buy me my plate armor, I wouldn't have to do this. So shut up. The game continues, as does Aladdin with his stupid plan, passing notes once in a while with the DM while we finish up our business in town. We take up our next quest from the new wizard patron and journey towards our new destination. Once we leave town, we get ambushed on the road. DM, the leader of the heavily armed band of thugs, shouts at you. How dare you try to intrude in the drug trade in our town? Give us our fair cut or pay with your lives. Aladdin and the Paladin, no way, criminals. You will perish in the name of the law. Wow, someone committing crimes while simultaneously punishing those who also do those same crimes, pretending they're somehow better? Do they, by chance, work for the U.S. government? Biting commentary. Monk. I'm not going to risk my life for this bullshit. Out in the paladin, shouting, My good friends here and I will send you to hell where you belong, evil scum. Me. I guess Aladdin just included us in this fight. So we fought. It was a mess. Monk was taken out during the combat, but DM was lenient. So some of the thugs dragged him away instead of outright killing him. Sorcerer Aladdin and I barely defeated the rest of them, but the kidnappers got away. Aladdin the Paladin. We would have easily defeated them if I had proper armor. What a dick. A while later, we have healed up and tracked the escaped thugs back to their hideout on the outskirts of town. After some tense moments and successful stealth rolls, we managed to break into the criminal hideout. Sorcerer, who was mostly passive up to this point, but having his best line of the campaign. Good thing you don't wear plate armor, Aladdin. Otherwise, you probably would have failed your stealth check. <laughs> Got he! We managed to take out some of the resting thugs undetected, find the unconscious monk, and finally we find all of the monk's belongings locked away in a chest. Aladdin the Paladin. Great, we'll take the money and split it up evenly. With that and my drug profits, I think I can afford the plate armor. Monk doesn't get a share since he didn't help us out here. Me? Dude, it's his money. Aladdin? We're in a kind of dungeon, and it's loot from a chest. Monk insisted that we split everything we find evenly. If you guessed that this is the moment when Monk threw his player's handbook, then you'd be correct. DM? Your loud argument has alerted the rest of the sleeping criminals. You hear their footsteps and shouting coming towards your direction. At this point, we postpone the argument, grab Monk and his stuff, and beat it. Sorcerer and I have disadvantage on athletics, because we're carrying Monk and his belongings. But we manage to escape. Aladdin, however, rolls a natural one. DM? Is anyone going to stop and help him? Me? Nope. Sorcerer? Nope. 
Aladdin gets surrounded by angry thugs and tries to fight them, curses us and our evilness for leaving him alone and dies an inglorious death. This time, for some reason, the criminals don't take prisoners. That's the end of the short but horribly annoying life of Aladdin the Paladin. And it's the end of this horror story. If you guys are interested, let me know and I'll write up a sequel to this. A sequel? Really? But Aladdin the Paladin is dead, isn't he? Yes, yes he is. But, unfortunately, his player rolled up a new character. If you're interested, I can introduce you to his successor. His name? Raladin, brother of Aladdin. I really wish I was kidding right now, but that was his name. But wait, there's a twist. Raladin wasn't a paladin. He was a rogue. So things will probably be better, right? Right? So right off the bat, I saw a number of people saying, based off his name alone, you should have known it would have ended up bad. And to that I say, people can have fun names and still not suck. One of my favorite characters I made for a one shot was named Wardle. He was a turtle. So yes, he was Wardle the turtle. Although the turtle wasn't officially part of his name, so I guess it's a little different. With that being said, players like this suck. They're the ones that need to stick to playing video games. Like I said before, nothing wrong with video games. I love video games. But people like this guy just clearly can't get past their main character syndrome. Feels good when the player gets his comeuppance. Now, the next story is actually a bit of a sidestep. It involves the same group, but in a different campaign. The true sequel mentioned by OP will be coming in next week's video. This sidestep in the saga of Aladdin is titled, The Orc Who Refused to Speak Common. If you've already read the short but horribly annoying life of Aladdin the Paladin, easily recognize who these people are. So I'll skip the introductions and get straight to the biscuits. The direct sequel to Aladdin the Paladin's story will follow another time. DM. For this new campaign, we'll start with higher level characters. And it will be an evil campaign. So feel free to play some of the more monstrous races. Great, I'll roll up an orc barbarian. DM. We'll use point buy for character generation. Orc. Point by sucks. I'm going to roll for my stats. DM, well, if you really want to, you can do that. But you'll roll right here in front of everyone. And you are going to stick with what you get. Are you sure you want to roll? Or grunts and rolls his dice. His stats come up below average. These stats suck. Yeah, they're not great, but also not completely terrible. You can build a functioning character with these. This campaign sucks already. Nobody forced you to roll. We fill out our character sheets and DM takes a quick look at them. DM, Orc, you didn't write down the common language. Everyone gets it for free. My Orc doesn't speak filthy human common. But you need to be able to communicate with people. Nobody in the group speaks Orc. Fine, then I'll take a Bissell. Cause you know, everyone speaks the language of demons from hell. DM, that's the language of demons. It won't be much help on the material plane. Orc. Sorcerer speaks abyssal, so I can talk with someone. My orc would never speak filthy human languages. <sighs> Fine, whatever, your choice. Since everyone starts at higher level, you can have some magical items as well. Good, I'll focus my build on charge attacks. The game begins, our group of evil characters are on their way to speak with their evil overlord, who resides in his evil mansion. DM, you see a tough looking knoll guarding the back door of a heavily reinforced mansion. He seems to be on high alert. Orc. Let me handle this. Me. Are you sure? Orc. I don't understand you, so I walk up to the knoll and tell him to step aside an orc. DM. The knoll looks at you completely confused and says something in a language you don't understand. I tell him to step aside an abyssal. DM. The knoll doesn't understand a word you say and looks increasingly annoyed. I'll walk back 20 feet, turn around and charge attack him. Me. Dude, this is literally the first NPC we meet in this campaign, and he's an ally. Orc. I don't understand you. I charge him. Orc rolls a critical hit and deals an incredible amount of damage. DM. You tackle the utterly surprised Knoll, and together you crash right through the reinforced back door. When you look down, you realize that you broke the Knoll's neck in the crash. Orc. Good. Now we can go inside now. I'm looking for the first person I meet and greet them in Orc and Abyssal. You can probably guess by this point how the rest of our meeting went. Sorcerer tried to stop Orc from attacking everyone who didn't understand him. And in response, Orc murdered Sorcerer's pet dog with a charge attack. Later, Orc was overwhelmed and finally killed by our overlord's henchman. DM, I think one of you has a diamond, so you'd be able to pay for a resurrection spell. 
everyone, we resurrect the dog. For his next character, Orc was forced to use point by. Well, at least John Wick would be happy with the outcome on this one. Three guesses on who Orc was from the first story. Seriously, dudes like this shouldn't play with others. Maybe hire a DM to one-on-one -on -one an adventure with you if you have to play a TTRPG. These stories also highlight one of my biggest pet peeves in the space. Having character traits be shown as subtle as anime side characters. Like, if you're an orc who hates humans, that's fine. It can even be good, but you still have to work with the party. Here, let me spitball a way of keeping the core of this character but not sucking. You're an orc who hates humans, but you learn the common tongue because 1. It allows you to talk to other races who also hate humans, and 2. You feel like it can give you an advantage over them should you ever decide to raid their village. Now, you accept a job that forces you to work with a filthy human. Well, this job serves me, so I shall accept, as long as he doesn't get in my way. When he speaks to me, I keep my answers short and do not give him the respect he feels he deserves. Then when on our adventures, if we happen to be fighting humans, maybe I enjoy it a little more than I should. Then, even though this is an evil campaign, I grow to respect my human companion. We bond over his skills of also killing humans. See how different that is? That sounds like a fun character. One that keeps the original heart of the character while making him part of the group and not just some prick off to the side your group hopes fails their saving throw. It also happens to give some development, a more dynamic character that isn't just bad orc hate human. For now though, I think that's enough Aladdin. As I said before, next week we'll finish out this epic saga. So with that, let's get to this week's bear facts. Canada is home to 60% of the world's polar bears. The Asiatic black bear has the largest ears of any bear species. Katmai National Park is home to approximately 4,000 Alaska brown bears. Most bears have 42 teeth. Grizzly bears can remember the faces of other bears. Before I end this, I wanted to officially announce that I was actually invited to the Dice Goblins channel. We have our next game in the works. If you've been watching the community tab, we've actually been having polls going on to decide what my race and class are going to be. As of the time of this recording, I don't know yet what I'll be playing as, but I'm still hope to be playing with some genuinely fantastic human beings as well as super talented creators so make sure to keep an eye out for that but i think that's going to do it for me today i want to thank you all for your continued support it means a ton to me seeing people get invested in this channel with that said if you like this video then make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already if you want to connect with me outside of youtube you connect with me on discord reddit facebook twitter and tiktok you can also check out the bear bar tales podcast if that's your sort of thing I have more episodes planned and in the works that I think you're going to love. For now though, this has been the Bear Bard. Stay kind, stay beautiful, and keep on living that bard life.